In 335 BC, he crushes rebellions in several areas of Greece, most notably the city of Thebes. Alexander takes the city and raises it. It's an absolute shockwave that goes through the Greek world. Thebes is one of the great and most prestigious of the Greek city-states, and now it's gone. 6,000 Thebans are slaughtered in one day. This ruthless action demonstrates Alexander's psychological advantage over his enemies. He was capable of doing anything at any time, so he's impulsive, and that gave him sort of a sense of deterrence among his enemies that you never knew what he would do. Under his command, and feared by all, is an army of the best trained soldiers in the world. At 30,000 strong, they are a force unlike any other. Alexander didn't worry what the enemy was going to do to him. He worried what he was going to do to the enemy. And that's a very different mindset. Alexander inspires his soldiers with both his confidence in their abilities and the camaraderie he shares with them. They had a love for Alexander, and they would follow and do anything he asked them to do. But he never asked them to do anything that he didn't do himself. Over the next two years, from 334 to 332 BC, Alexander leads his army across modern Turkey. In each battle, he is victorious. But the siege of Tyre is a very different fight. He has yet to conquer a fortified island city half a mile at sea. By late January of 332 BC, just a few weeks after approaching Tyre, Alexander begins construction of the land bridge to connect Tyre to the mainland. It's called a mole, and it will be a massive and complicated construction project. The process of building the mole was creating some way to contain the earth that was being dumped so it didn't spread out on the seafloor and get washed away. Alexander's engineers devise a unique solution to reinforce the sides of the mole. Two rows of wooden piles are driven into the sea floor, creating a solid barrier to contain tons of earth and trees. But it must have a surface that is uh, flat enough to roll the engines of uh, siege warfare over. So you have planks, you have wood. It's a combination of rock and wood, fundamentally, with filling matter. As construction moves further into the Mediterranean currents, progress on the mole slows. As you leave the mainland, you go out to Tyre, the water is deeper, the current is stronger, you're at a greater distance from your source of fill on the mainland, and you're under increasing attack from the city. To protect his workers from deadly long-range archers and catapult fire, Alexander builds two defensive towers on either side of the mole. From here, his archers can fire back on Tyrian warships. Despite these hardships, after two months, the land bridge gets significantly closer to Tyre. Now the threat of Alexander's army becomes a real concern to the Tyrians. Their navy takes action, launching a series of devastating attacks on the construction crews. Alexander essentially had no fleet to protect himself against the Tyrians. They could beach and do commando raids against his parties that were bringing down the timber from the, the Lebanon mountains. To attack the workers, the Tyrians build an ingenious ship with an extended prow that can reach the land bridge. They send a ship full of cauldrons of boiling matter, sulfur, fire, which when the ship crunches into the mole, the combustible material spreads all over the mole and the mole is destroyed. The huge inferno burns nearly everything. The bridge, the war machines, and the towers. What's left is washed away by the powerful Mediterranean currents. The calculated attack destroys months of work and may derail Alexander's entire plan. March 332 BC. Alexander the Great is two months into his siege of Tyre. When the Tyrians destroy his causeway to the city and decimate his battle strategy. His campaign to conquer the known ancient world is now in a holding pattern. Alexander, for one of the few times in his career, finds himself befuddled. And in fact, he actually thinks about giving up. But only briefly. 
Alexander is just not a quitter. Uh, he's the sort of person who, when he's faced with a challenge and what seems to be failure, seems to dig down deeper into digging his heels even more. Alexander decides to rebuild the mole. This time, he'll construct it at an angle to protect it from the strong Mediterranean currents. In addition, Alexander realizes he must now use the navies of the Phoenician coastal cities he's already conquered to protect his workers during construction. And this is where Alexander comes up with his great tactical innovation. He decides to mount his artillery on floating barges. Alexander wants to outfit these ships with weapons designed to knock out Tyrian attack boats and other defenses. His most revolutionary weapon is the torsion catapult. It's a deadly device that allows Alexander's armies to wage war from a distance. The catapult is a fairly new machine on the battlefield. First invented by the Greeks, it's been in use for just 60 years. Before the invention of the catapult, it was almost impossible to take a fortified city. A city that was surrounded by walls was impregnable. There was no way to knock down those walls, or if there was, it was at a tremendous loss. Catapult changed the equation, and for the first time, really in Greek history, that a besieging army that could knock down the walls and storm through the, uh, through the frontal assault, and that had not been done before. Early tension catapults can hit a target about 150 yards away. But Alexander's improved design provides him with much greater force and nearly twice the range. His catapult uses the power of torsion, harnessing the stored energy of tightly twisted rope, horsehair, or animal gut. You can make those uh, rope springs very, very large, far larger than you could ever make the bow uh, of a tension catapult. And because of that reason, you could throw rocks and arrows and missiles of all sorts much, much farther. Known as ballistas, these machines range in size from 10 to 20 feet high with wooden arms of 3 to 6 feet in length. A winch draws a bowstring back across the length of a shaft between the arms to create a powerful release mechanism. You've got lots of energy stored there, and then when you crank the arms back, you twist them tighter. And so you're already starting off at a high energy level, and then you increase that as you cock it and let it go, you get that back. Alexander's catapult is able to fire a 30-pound stone more than 300 yards. The stones are formed of smaller rocks and baked together with clay. Heavy iron arrows weighing up to 20 pounds can also be launched with deadly precision and force. There are instances of missiles and rocks hitting people, actually impaling people against uh, the palisades of a fort. So you'd aim that at a, a flanks of soldiers coming towards you and make shish kebab out of four or five up in the process. The catapult requires great skill to operate accurately and effectively. Accidents can be deadly if the force of the powerful mechanism goes awry. There are records of the catapults going bad and they didn't find the crew. You know, something breaks on firing and it just shatters. And, you know, they find pieces of the operator somewhere.